in this video, I'm going to show you how I added this extra battery to my Saunders Madma. Now I'm going to show you step by step how I did this. All products used are linked in the description below. So please like this video and subscribe to my channel. Now let's get started on this build. All right, to add the extra battery to the Saunders Madma, it's really only three components, the battery, the wire harness that plug and plays with the factory wiring, and then the switch or the battery combiner. Now, I did hook this three-way switch up before and it worked great, but I am gonna go with this battery combiner that I sourced. Most of the battery combiners on the market have the same type of wiring. So if I wanna switch back and forth to the switch, it can be easily done because all the wire harnesses are the same. So you can see that there's two going in and then there's one coming out at the center um, that goes to the control. So I'm gonna set that switch aside. So here's the battery combiner, set that aside. Now what I did is I put a factory fuse in line and then an XT60 connector female so it plugs right into the battery combiner. The nice thing with this battery, I do have to say, this plug is the same plug that's on the factory uh, battery for the Saunders. So I can use that charger to charge that battery. So this is how you get the Saunders Mad Mod or other Saunders bike to work with an auxiliary battery and a three-way switch. The same could be used if this is a battery combiner because they use the same XT60 connectors. Now this is what comes from the factory battery. It's a HiGo L513 connector. The power is gonna come out, it's gonna go into the switch, and then when this switch is turned this way, it's gonna come back out and then go to the controller, then off to the motor. That's an also a HiGo L513 connector. The auxiliary battery will be attached over here and that's what makes this possible. I then also spliced across here the RX and TX connections so that it will talk to the onboard controller. So now I'm gonna hook this all up and get it nice and tucked underneath the seat so that you don't see any of this wiring. All right, before I get started wiring the extra battery in the box, I'm gonna do a few things from a safety standpoint. Make sure you're wearing safety glasses and I'm also gonna remove the factory battery to prevent any shorting. All right, with the battery removed, I have this HiGo L513 adapter connector with XT60 connectors on either end. And you'll see underneath here, there's that HiGo L513 connector. I'm going to unscrew that and then plug and play this connector with that and then run that to the battery combiner or switch. Here you can see the HiGo L513 connectors. They're connected to the factory wiring and then out comes the two XT60 connectors. This cable here is for the auxiliary battery. I'm gonna put an XT60 onto that. That runs into the battery box and then I will either attach the battery combiner or that homemade three-way switch. I'm gonna try the battery combiner. I'm gonna tuck it all up underneath this space underneath the seat. Looking under the seat, you can see the battery combiner. The cables run back. They run underneath the seat and then up into the front. Now I did have to loosen the four bolts under the seat to get everything to run nicely under the seat. But from the top, using that cable sleeve, you can barely see that cable harness. All right, so I got everything connected. The battery combiner is all hooked up. I'm gonna install the factory battery, test it um, with the setup, and then I'm going to shut it off and then add the auxiliary battery. So let's get this battery installed. Hit the I button. There we go, we have power. The battery combiner does work. Power is flowing. The auxiliary battery, which I can then add and remove. But I'm gonna shut this off to get the power off the system. And open up this. Now I'm going to be installing this auxiliary battery. This auxiliary battery, I did put an inline fuse on there with an XD60 connector. You can use different batteries and such. So I'm going to place that battery in there. 
All right, now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shut the factory battery off, the off switch on the factory battery, and then I'm gonna hit the I button to see if the system turns on. Now I know it is using just the auxiliary or backup battery. Uh, I put these foam inserts in here to keep the battery in position while I'm riding. Also, to provide clearance for this latch, I need to move the battery back. I really like this setup because I can simply remove this battery when I'm going on rides under 30 miles and then if I'm going on a ride that's uh, 35 to 40 miles, I can easily add this battery back in. It also uses the factory charge port so I can use the factory charger. So one thing that's nice is it simply closes like such and there you go. And now I'm going to go for a big long ride hopefully if it doesn't rain.